Yes, you are at point of experience. I just stole the podcast from Paul. But don't worry. You guys can see him. The only thing you have to do is write an Apple podcast review. And I promise that I'll bring Paul back immediately. So go ahead and do that. Pause this right here. If you want his if you want the podcast back, go do it. I'll be right here. Good. Okay, you did it. Welcome to Points of Experience. I will be hosting this week and interviewing our fearless leader, Paul Castro Jr. We had a great conversation. This one's a real treat, so I look forward to seeing you in the future. Because I'm in the past. Oh, wait. Help! Wait, who's that? It's, it's Paul. Jeremy! All right, all right, you can come out. They left they left an Apple podcast review. Come on out. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Guys, he strapped me. We got to go. Here he we is. Gotta leave a review. Points of experience episode. Ah! We are here again, whether you like it or not, for another episode of Points of Experience. And I am with just, you know, nobody particularly important to the show, but just the creator himself, Mr. Paul Castro Jr. (laughs) I sound like I'm uh, Thanos or something. (laughs) (laughs) Paul Castro Jr. In my head. The God, that guy's voice is so good. Josh Brolin, right? He was Thanos? I think so. Yeah, yeah. So. And if he wasn't, he was. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is going to be a fun one. We're going to be talking about a bunch of cool stuff and just kind of like a ch- more chill, laid-back episode for the week. Um, I figured, you know, we, we would let the audience just know more about you. And, I mean, I'm sure everyone knows a lot, but I'm sure they'll learn something today. Even you're... Unfortunately. <laughs> I'm going to ask the tough questions, everyone. Yeah, no, let's kidding. do it. We've got the lie detector test on. I'm going to keep that. <laughs> well, um, I guess we could start with... I'm just going to go right into this. What led you to pursue what you are pursuing today, which is being an actor, voice actor... Content creator, streamer, everything. What led you down that path? Oh, boy. All right. Here we go. And everybody, I uh, brace here. Brace. We're going to, you know, it's going to be a little boring. We're going to have to hear about me, but hopefully we'll find a gem here that's worth something for all of you. And everybody, give, let's just give a, a round of applause to Joe real quick. Can we can we also get some sound effects in for a round of applause for Joe for doing this? It's going to be quite the uh interesting task to make me sound interesting and good but uh okay Big so how did i start um <laughs> i gosh i mean you know from when i was a kid i was always ridiculous i think to agree and i think that's probably what was the inception for why i started doing this i was gosh i was like a I was like a short, pudgy kid, and I think acting became like the opportunity for me to not be like to, to like put me in like the spotlight, so so to speak, like to have attention that was like good. So I didn't really realize any of this until later. I mean, I was in school; I was like the class clown and stuff, and I was always doing things to get in trouble. But it wasn't until, uh, and I've said this a bunch of times, but it's hard to not explain my journey with this is I was doing pre-med and I had terrible teachers and I was like this is mind numbing I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna jump into a lake and not leave this lake if I don't find something else to do (laughs) and uh I wound up my mom sat found like your aunt Lori my mom found a, a uh a cutout in like a newspaper or something. It was for an audition at the Count Basie Theater in Red Bank, New Jersey. It's like an uh, an equity theater, I think it was. It was pr- like a fairly 
good theater. Like a lot of stand-up comedians go there and stuff. And um, like big name people. I remember I was supposed to see Norm MacDonald, Rest His Soul there. Um, Jason Alexander. I mean, some, everybody's played at this place. It's a popular venue. And they were doing a, a, a Miss Saigon. Couldn't be more wrong for any of these um, roles involved in this musical. And I'd never sang musical theater in front of anybody. So I had my mom and my grandma, nanny, Jean, 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 sit in my car, my mom's car with me while I sang a song from this musical. And they were like, yeah, it's not terrible. I was like, okay, that's all the, that's all the, the approval I needed to go and audition for this musical. Cause they know they tell and you I the did. truth. <laughs> yeah. They just lied to me. <laughs> hey, listen, even if they did, it led me to keep doing it. Right. Uh, I wound up going to audition for this. I thought it'd be like American Idol. Couldn't be more wrong. And from the second I walked in with my sheet music, I blacked out. I don't know if I actually sang a note or not. Um, it was terribly embarrassing, terrifying. And at the end of the whole thing, it wound up giving me the realization that that was extremely scary and something foreign I'd never done before. But it was still kind of fun. Like it felt like exciting in a way and i was like oh i survived that i could probably survive any other audition that couldn't have been more embarrassing yep they also had me stick around for a dancing portion of it which i further embarrassed myself um <laughs> that was dreadful yeah see like that's super interesting because like to do what you're doing you not only have to be able to sing but you also have to dance and you also have to yeah. like you know be able to hit all the emotions of what you're portraying and it's exhausting to someone like me. <laughs> and the reason why mm -hmm. I even asked you that question at first is because I wanted to stack your reasoning to what mine was. And I was pretty sure it was going to be different, and it was. So my short-lived career in... Uh, I like to call myself a shooting star. Because <laughs> they explode and die and they never come back again, which is oh what I do. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. So I literally shot up, exploded... And then died. The reason that happened was because, well, we won't get into that. But my no, I want to hear it. Actually, I want to hear. It. Let's listen. We're gonna bounce this back as much as possible. Obviously, when you, uh, why, why, why do you think the reason was that you, you, you? I mean, because you had such. I mean, I know how much hard work you put into yeah. everything you were doing with your channel. Like you worked harder than anyone I've ever seen to pursue what you were doing, content creating and, and professional gaming, and you got a you know you know a contract to work with a professional organization. Like why? What was yeah. the tipping point? Well, I was originally going back to say what my motivation was because it, it's interesting that it wasn't different. It was different than what yours was. Mine mm -hmm. was like, I didn't want to regret not trying it. So like mm -hmm. I was sitting in my accounting office in my corporate job for like four years. And I was like, is this going to be it? Is this going to be me for the next 40 years? Am I not going to like, I used to live for gaming and, and like, just, I would like leave work and don't th think about as soon as I get home, like I'm going to play games all night. Like that, that like yeah. I, I can't wait to get home to do that. And then one day I was just like, you know what? What like if I don't do this now, I'm gonna regret it for the rest of my life. And it's funny that you just said, Well, I just knew and I did it. Like right yeah. away. For me, it was like not like that at all. Which is why it was mm. just interesting to compare that because I did something completely different first. I kind of knew in the back of my head, like that I didn't really want to do, you know like accounting or whatever or like any other job but i guess i just didn't have the i'm gonna say cojones mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't know why it sounds a little less uh vulgar than <laughs> <laughs> i guess I mean, direct translation it means the same thing. <laughs> but um yeah i i um i didn't have the courage to do it and then i literally the fear of missing out and having regret pushed me to do it more than just wanting to do it, which is crazy. But, but what was that moment? Like, so you had been working, you had a job, you were Four doing years. Yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. And then what was, but what was the tipping point for you then that we were like, t like, what was the one thing that stood out? They were like, it's gotta be now it, because was it a bad day at work or it, like it was literally just like a random day at work. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like, 
you hear about these moments from like other people all the time and everyone's like yeah okay whatever like you just like you know and then like uh uh leprechaun showed up too at the same time like no it really (laughs) it really feels like that it feels like like you question your life (laughs) it's i can't yeah i can't explain it further than that maybe it was just a build-up it was like the boiling pot you know it it had been a build-up for so long and you just that that day was just you know the the pot overfilled see like imagine you were you not discovering you wanted to do this until you were like 20 something like just starting yeah. then, like you started way mm. earlier than that. Obviously, I remember at home, you know, my mom would tell me, "Hey, PJ's on TV." I was like, "No <laughs> way! Let me see this guy." And then, sure, sure enough, you're uh, <laughs> you're you're getting in trouble by the FBI on one of the shows. Yeah, <laughs> sure, yeah. And I, I was think, like, "Damn, he's everything... really doing it! Like, he's really yeah. doing it! He's there! He's on the like." I always thought that was awesome, and. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like, but even that was when I was just like, "Oh, he's doing this shit. I'm not. Like, I'm just going to my job and thinking about doing it. He is living it. So that's yeah. kind of what like pushed it to like the the edge." Like, what know. about what about with your? I was gonna say because even your brother, it always kind of like impressed me that he was doing what he was doing in a very different fashion. It was like uh, the fact that he, because your brother is such a character. I love him, Chris. If you're if you're listening to this, I love you to death. But he's you know he, he's he's a character within himself, you know, and he's he was able to get himself on a reality TV show. Did L- that that because that happened before you started streaming, right? Yes. L- listen, Chris has something that I don't have and will never have, and it's luck. You know, Squid. You never. All right. Spoilers for people who didn't watch Squid Game by now. But uh, okay, like it's been so long. You know that bridge yeah. at the end that they all had to like jump over, and you had to pick the right one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I will bet money that Chris would pick right every time. Like that's the luck. <laughs> like I would send him first. I'd be like, Yo, we got this. No one's dying yeah. right now. He's gonna pick right on every single one. That's what he has, man. And he just mm. <sighs> obviously, like you know, he's him. But yeah. That does play a part in some degree to both of our our journeys, you know? Sure. Streaming, acting, voice acting, gaming. Luck is considerably important, I feel. Yes. I think it's one of the, the, the most paramount part of the equation because you can have all the skill in the world, but if you yeah. don't have that lucky op... And granted, okay, this is a very highly debated thing when they talk about like opportunity, luck, hard work, and skill. Like I, I, I understand all that, but if you don't have something that you really, if you don't have confidence or you don't have belief in yourself, I mean, even for you, you had to believe that you were good at the game you were playing. You were really good at Fortnite. If you weren't as skilled as you were and as knowledgeable as you were, I don't think you would have pursued it as hard as you could or been able to put the information out there if you didn't work as hard as you you were able to do. Your brother, if he wasn't so confident in himself and knew that he was like a comedic personality and that he just as himself was extremely like charismatic and funny, I don't think he would have been able to put himself out there and be successful. And then for me, it was like if I didn't know that I didn't work so hard at becoming skilled at acting and, and studying the technique of, of the, the various techniques that I did and really like committing my all to it. And then obviously having like the 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 emotional trauma that comes with being an actor where, you know, you've got your, you know, your your growing up issues, you've got your desire to be liked amongst your peers and all this and that, all the, you know, the bullying, all those things combined it into me having like emotional depth as a performer and humility and vulnerability. So, but even if I had all those things, even if we all had all those things, it's not until that lucky opportunity, like if, if my first manager didn't say yes to me. Yeah. My first managers at Shirley Grant, they were the original, they they originally represented uh, the Jonas Brothers. Uh, like that's their claim to fame. They're no longer around, Shirley Grant. She, she, I, don't, I don't believe they're no longer around. But I'm still with that same manager. So that- Who was there? I mean, that's crazy how you actually led into the second you know, point of my first question, which was- Sure. How did you go from Paul Castro Jr., the, the kid who wanted to do this- to yeah. Paul Castro Jr., the kid who just landed his first gig. W- well, what happened between those two people? Yeah, well, it's it's crazy because, and this is where the hard work came in. I wound up reading a book called 
Well, all right. So I was going to college, Monmouth University. I auditioned for one of the school plays after I had my horrible scenario with that musical. And I wound up getting a, a part in the school play called After Juliet. Very small role. His character, Lorenzo, he's basically one of these henchmen, like for um, Benvolio. I think it's the, the premise of the play is what happens after right. Romeo and Juliet, blah, blah, blah. I wound up getting a small play in there. I wound up falling in love with acting. I get really addicted to like performing. I wound up joining a sketch comedy group called LOL Comedy. And I wound up doing like funny, stupid skits. Just And some of that stuff still exists today <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, and... I'm falling in love with acting. I'm falling in love with the idea of performing. And I had a moment where I was like, okay, I'm in my third year in college. I've done the plays. I'm doing the plays. But I don't feel like I'm getting the training to take me to the next level. I feel like I'm the most talented person in the room. And that's not to be conceited. But I felt like I'm working so hard yeah. and people are kind of partying a little too much around me or they're not as hungry as I am. So I make this decision to my myself, and it was really scary because I was kind of like getting all the lead roles in the plays at this point. I wound up playing Adam in this play called The Shape of Things with Allie, um, my fiance now. We wound up acting in this play together, and uh, I'm playing the lead role, and I'm getting great opportunities. The head of the department really likes me, but I'm like, I need to, to take it further. And I knew I wanted to be in either L.A. or New York. It was safe for me, for me to be in New York, and I'm like, I'm going to apply to NYU. You know, I've... I just knew they had a great acting program. I, I also was kind of like, I didn't really know. I, I didn't think I had the skill to get into like Juilliard or any of these other places. New, NYU just seemed like the place I wanted to be. I had a friend who had been going there too. So I said, I'm going to audition for NYU. It's the only school I'm going to apply to transfer in. Cause it was like, I, it was very stressful for me to even think about transferring. But I was like, I'm going to audition. I'm going to apply just there. If I get in, I'm going to go. I auditioned and I wound up getting in. Wow. Crazy, like, and I knew there was a studio I wanted to go to, the Meisner studio. I had been researching everything. Meanwhile, all this time, while I'm obsessed with theater and all this crap, I'm like pursuing every opportunity that comes my way. Um, there, I remember there was this guy, Ben Wright. He was one of the original performers in the musical Into the Woods, which many people know. They made a you know a, a movie about it with uh, Meryl Streep and Johnny Depp. Um, wait, Johnny Depp? Yeah, yeah, he played the wolf. Okay, so I, I auditioned for this guy's thing. It's called, like, Ben Wright's blah, blah, blah program. And uh, it seemed, like, gimmicky to me, but I'm I'm pursuing every avenue. I went to this place in New Jersey. It was like, hey, we're going to make you, you know, like when you go to the malls and there's people there saying, like, you could be a model or you could be an actor. Yeah. Like, they used, to, they used to be around. I don't know if they are as much anymore. Like, I was doing every single thing I could because I, like, I was, I wanted to take myself to the next level. I wound up getting into NYU, have this dramatic transferring thing. And as I'm getting into NYU, the summer between that year before I get there, I start sending out postcards. This is going to sound like dinosaur shit for people, but you used to have to put your face on a postcard and say what you were doing, um, a little bit about yourself, or you, oh, or maybe it was headshot and resumes. You'd mail them to agencies and uh, management companies. You'd put your headshot and resume in a cover. I remember to stand out. Again, this is the business part of me. I said... The odds of somebody opening up like one of those envelopes, like the Manila envelopes, is they probably have stacks of them you at the a time. Pink one? You know? Mine was a red one. Ah. I did a red, a red envelope, but also it was a window envelope. Ooh. Now here's where it gets crazy. It was a window envelope, so you could see my headshot in the envelope as I'm mailing it. Yeah. So, you know, the mail people, whoever's going through my mail, they're probably like, what the <laughs> heck is this picture of this kid? This, like, just Am I getting in looking trouble photo. for this? Like, holding I know, right? Yeah, it seems very weird. Like, is somebody sending, like, lewd photos to somebody or something? Some, some weird fetish going on? So I'm sending these window envelopes out to these agents and managers, and I sent them to these youth companies. I looked so young when I was yeah. doing this. And this one youth management company had... They saw my picture. They must have been like, oh, this looks just like a kid we would cast in like a youth show. He looks young. Yeah. And the benefit I had of looking so young and being as old as I was was I had the maturity and understanding and the skills for acting. I had a good work ethic. So when I went into audition, I had a good audition for them and then they signed me. So in between that year of me going to my first college or sorry to NYU from the other college, I already had management and I was auditioning and this management company, because they were youth, they were sending me out on everything back when I was starting. If you had representation, you were going out on every big thing. Yeah. The first movie I ever, ever auditioned for, I remember big thing was a, a movie called the place beyond the pines. I don't know if you remember it was Bradley Cooper and Ryan Gosling, Ding Dehan and, wow. um, a couple, and, um, I forget who else, um, but it was like a big movie. 
I was auditioning for all of these big titles. Eventually, later on, I wound up auditioning for Spider-Man. You know, like every big title that a young guy that looked like me could have gone out for. Right. To some degree, I was going out for. And that's the best. I wasn't really ready. Yeah. Go ahead. No, that that's the best strategy, I feel like. You were just swinging for the fences, and if one hits, you're, you know. Yeah. I was lucky to have that opportunity, but I also wasn't really ready. It wasn't until I finished NYU that I had felt like I really, like my conservatory training, that I knew what I was doing. I kind of had just raw talent before. I was kind of like uh, like in an anime <laughs> analogy. Like I was just kind of like this burst of energy that you could just throw at something that you can't direct. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's what I felt like I was. I could muscle my way through good acting, and it wasn't until I did He's doing NYU. his attack that he can't aim. What's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, dude. And then That's they exactly make you wait like. two weeks to see the next episode, and then you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Gohan. I was like, Team go? Gohan. Yeah, <laughs> blind rage. <laughs> so I wound up, I wound up getting a, 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 the first thing I booked when I was in school that was big was a movie that James Franco was producing with a bunch of NYU grad students because he was teaching a class and I wound up doing this movie like Whoopi Goldberg was in it, Logan Marshall Green, uh, Chloe Sevigny. And that movie, I don't know if ever it ever saw the light of day. I wound up doing that. I did a bunch of student films. I did a bunch of like theater. Um, I was just working as much as I could, finding any way I could to, to make content and like break in. And then the first like really big thing was uh, the Skeleton Twins. And I played Ty Burrell's son from Modern Family. Uh, and I had a scene with him and Bill Hader. And Kristen Wiig was also in the movie. And I was like, oh my gosh. Wow. I'm actually doing this. And it was a simple role. I was just playing his son, answering the door and being like, hey, what's up? What's going on here? Yeah. So I just really had to be myself. And I think that's what scored me the, the audition was... I wasn't really acting at that point. I was just being myself and being authentic and true. And that's all they really wanted. They didn't want someone to be like, who are you? You know, yeah, like that yeah. high school theatery type of stuff. I didn't have any of those bad habits with me. Um, so we, I think once I had done that movie, I was like, okay, this is serious. This is for real. I think I can, can do this. Um, and I was still in school at the time. Uh, I think I maybe had like a summer left or I was in my second year. Still, but the first year of Meisner training is insane. It teaches you so much. Whew, that was a lot. That was awesome. I mean, yeah. I think the. I mean, we got our we got our freaking answer. Jeez. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had I, to be thorough. You know, no, no. I mean to be that because I was actually curious of how. You know, you were opposite of me. You knew you wanted this from from the beginning, and you just got to getting i'm gonna say which means you yeah. know you basically went to the right school went to the right place imagine in like i don't know maybe 10 15 years where kids can decide hey i want to be a pro gamer i'm gonna go to uh nyu for gaming like they'll have like a branch for gaming like mm. it wasn't like that you know like no. you i mean i i guess that was there, there were schools where you can make games when i yeah. when i was like applying to colleges and i always was just like I'm not that smart. Like I can't make. It. Yeah. I can play them pretty good. I, I can't. I, can't I had the it. same feeling because, like you, I was obsessed with games, and that's kind of how I wound right. up even getting into this. But I remember I was like, I don't really want to make the games. I want to. I want to. I want to play them. Play them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's I, what I had like that doing. little conundrum, like getting a campus tour somewhere, <laughs> and like someone's like, you know, there's a school you can like make games, and I'm just like, nah, I don't want to play them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like you did exactly what you said. I'm not smart enough to do that. Like that requires a whole other set of Respect skills to those computer uh, whizzes. Heck out yeah! There. I mean, like I I consider myself pretty good at computers and math and stuff, and I just don't think I'd be even close to what is needed to do all that. Yeah, stuff. maybe. I'm did wrong. you ever take CAD in high school? No. Yeah. That's what I took, and I when, when I had experienced that, where it's like, you know, computer animated design or drawing, I don't remember the acronym for it, but you had to, like, build bridges and stuff in it, and you'd, like, run small animations. Right. And that, to me, was so overwhelming. I was like, yeah, just, that's, you know, not for me. Well, I hate to get dark only 20 minutes into the podcast, but I do have a question regarding... Um... Well, let me give you some backstory to the question. So when I was doing my content creation, which was like Instagram videos, YouTube videos, and stuff like that, 
it was so like there were so many ups and downs throughout my day like a normal human being doesn't experience that that isn't doing something like what we're doing and i'm mm-hmm. talking about like posting a video the video getting i don't know i had a video on instagram that got a million views in one day mm-hmm. then the next day posting a video and it got like 20,000 yeah and then i'm like hmm should I pack all of it up now? Should I just delete the account or should I keep going? And yeah. dealing with the stress of that every day because of numbers, I felt like uh I felt I, I don't know, man. It was just like a roller coaster of emotions every day and that's obviously not good for anybody's mental health. Yeah. And I like to connect this all the way back to the question you were asking me earlier on where it's like what happened? I think it was a combination of a lot of these things that I'm saying now where it's like constant stress to to perform and and do as good and or better to get more opportunity. Mm. So I guess compared to that, you don't have like I'm trying to think if you have a similar metric. So I guess well, basically my question is how do you push through when you have these type of, you know, days or situations like what I described? Well, I think what you're saying, and it's, uh, gosh, I, I mean, I know it, for people right now, and specifically like what you're saying, people pursuing careers as Twitch streamers, yeah. content creators, or just whatever it is, it, success is being so magnified by a number. Exactly. But it's if true, it though. Doesn't, it, 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 it is true. It, it, unfortunately, it's the, it's the reality of what is monetarily successful yeah from like a career standpoint and unfortunately if you're trying to pursue something as a career and make it your livelihood you know you're dependent upon those numbers and those metrics and the brand deals and blah 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 so views do regulate whether or not something is quote unquote successful and i think it's stressful for people because i think they wind up then creating you see the shift of doing what they loved and then shifting to doing what makes them money, yeah. doing what's gonna what's gonna blow up, doing what's gonna be popular, and then I then people get burnt out, and then people stop doing what they're doing. I'm not yep. saying that's what you did, but I'm saying no, that that right. definitely you, you start feeding into the system, the mm-hmm. algorithm like d- dictates your entire creative process. And I mean, I've experienced that to a degree because even like you, before I was even really doing acting full time, or even let's say voice acting, because voice acting is what's paid my bills primarily. I've been yeah. lucky to work on TV shows and films and stuff, but those are far and few. Voice acting is the thing, the gift that kept on giving. And you know, intermittently through those things, I was trying to make my own content, trying to produce my own movies, trying to become successful on Twitch, trying to pursue professional gaming. You know, I was trying to find every one of those outlets. Yeah. But again, it's like you're. There's like a bit of gatekeeping that exists um, based off of like a numbered success. How many followers do you have on Instagram? Blah, 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 blah. For me, as an actor, the way that that was measured was, are you booking these auditions? Exactly. You know, you're auditioning a ton, ton of of times. Mm And 100%, there was so many times I'm just like, this is getting really hard to survive and also thrive at the same time. Right. Because I needed to pay my bills. It was expensive living in New York City. Um, I didn't want to le- li- live home even though my family was in Jersey just because I knew there was no way I was going to be able to be like a vulnerable actor <laughs> living in a house where my mom and dad were constantly fighting and my little brother was like destroying the yeah. house and my sister was flipping out about someone being in the bathroom. Blah, blah. <laughs> so like, you know, typical family stuff. But oh, it I was, know. I knew I wanted this so bad that I never thought about having a plan B or giving up on acting. It was all it was always about like what can I do while waiting for the acting to happen. So that's why I started writing. I started producing, I started directing, I started streaming. I knew I wanted to perform. And that doesn't necessarily mean I have to be, you know, the actor on the TV series. I just wanted to storytell in whatever way I could. And if that's storytelling a video game while I'm streaming it or writing a story or directing it or whatever, being a producer, I am obsessed with the storytelling process. I think I'm really good at being a performer and telling it from that vehicle. But your job as an actor, like the way the actual profession that's written down should be somebody who auditions for jobs and sometimes gets them. 
because that's really what yeah. a working actor is. These celebrities who just like go from job to job and they don't have to audition anymore, that's not the majority of what actors are doing. Most of us are freaking auditioning day after day after day, learning copy, whatever it is, and praying we get the opportunity to actually do it for other people to see and not just the creatives. And that beats you down. You know, not getting job after job. And it took me, you know, I, I did little things here and there, but nothing that would have changed my life to the way I'd hoped. You know, I always thought I'd be like Michael J. Fox and have my own series by the time I was 25. <laughs> and then that came and went. And you're just like, okay, uh, who's another actor who was successful at 26? All right, who was successful at 27? <laughs> you know? See, it's crazy how you had your little nuanced feelings that were irrational the same way that I did. Because yeah. I would have like... All right, like if I stream at three o'clock, will I get the same viewers? Because if I don't get the same viewers, I'm gonna be upset and I'm gonna like not want to stream, and people are gonna think I I fell off or like I, I you know I, uh, I my my channel's dying. Like there's so many yeah. ridiculous thoughts, you know. Like oh, should I if I don't have my show by 26, like I'm not, you know, whatever he said, like that I'm not successful, quote unquote. Yeah, even though. When I think of you, I think of someone who's a you know distinguished, successful actor. I'll just say I'll, uh, I'll just throw it into one thing. Sure. But <laughs> when you think of yourself, sometimes, and this is everyone, sometimes you might not think that. So there are people out there that are going through this in content creation, acting, everything. Yeah. And that's why I'm looking to you because <laughs> I let it I let it eat eat me alive. Mm. But you're still here. So what are some of the things you say to yourself on those bad days? You know, you didn't get the audition or yeah. you thought you were 100% getting the audition and you didn't. <laughs> I did. I've tried. What do you say? I, I've tried every going. form. I've tried every form of mental gymnastics of being like, okay, this one I'm not going to care about. So that way I get it. Okay. okay. This one I'm really going to care about. So I get it. This one I tell myself as I walk in the room, this is mine. Nobody else can get it. And I don't get it any of these scenarios it's always just like you know like you can't control the tides you can only work your best and try and get out of your way and not play mental gymnastics about it but gosh it's uh even today where somebody who's listening to this might think wow paul's worked on all these cool things he's been in a lead in a video game he's been on tv he's been in movies to somebody that might be the dream yeah. And trust me, I am so grateful. I am so content. I'm so blessed and happy to be where I am. But after I'm done with the ne the next job, I'm unemployed. Yeah. And I'm still trying to pay my student loans. I'm still trying to pay my rent. I'm still trying to save up for the next thing. I'm trying to make my car payment. You know, keep, make sure my utilities are on. I can go out, you know, budgeting how much I can go out and eat. Living in LA is not cheap, oh, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And man. and having four cats is a monthly expense too, but I I love them. I keep telling myself I love them. So that way it makes sense. Love them. <laughs> it's yeah. a necessity at that point. It's an, it, it really yeah. is. I mean, there's a lot of payoff having them here through the dark times as well. And COVID also is like a whole other thing in this industry. So blah, blah, blah. But for some people, you know, they might look at me and think I'm absolutely killing it. And I don't take that for granted. But we as artists and humans, as we keep, you know, taking that next step on the ladder, it's hard to not look at the next person above you and say, man, I want that. I want to get that. How do I get there? Um, and people lose sight of how much they have. And it, it's it's about reminding myself, having those um, gratitude conversations with myself in the shower and saying, I am grateful to have my health. I'm grateful to have my family. I'm grateful to have a, a loving partner. I'm grateful to have animals who love me. I'm grateful to have done all the cool things that the younger me would have flipped out if I said I'm the I'm the lead in a Square Enix game. Like yeah. I would, I, my the child in me would have flipped out if yeah. I knew that's what I was doing. And it's just about remembering what you love and continuing to every opportunity as an actor to treat those auditions like you have the job. So you've got the experience, the full experience of performing and all the great stuff that comes with that from every audition. You feel like you've, you're getting that release and putting somebody's skin on or the, you know, the, the voice or character, whatever you, how you want to classify that. You, you've had all that in the audition and it's just having a good support system, having hobbies outside of what you do, you know, making sure you have a community so that every day is not constantly spotlighted by like what is the measure of how successful you are in acting 
I mean, gosh, my grandma would always say to me, uh, she'd be it. like, all right, what can I see you on? Why aren't you on that show, Frida? <laughs> she'd be like, she'd like, why aren't you on, why aren't you on this series? I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'll call best. him up tomorrow and, and tell him, you know, hey, you know, I should have been on this show. Shame yeah. on you. Yeah. And I think a lot of people who are artists have that same problem with their family is like, they don't get it. When you're not, when people aren't pursuing careers like you and I have, it's hard for them to understand how much of a grind it is to 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 get yourself your head above the water and all the other noise around you. Um but I just try to stay busy, stay outdoors, do things I love that's not related to acting or also just being in control of myself and my career and write the stories I think I'd be right for, produce the things that I think I would be right for. Um you know, it's it's hard to be just an actor right now cuz you're going to do a lot of waiting. You're going to do a lot of sitting around waiting for somebody else to tell you to give you the permission to do what you love. I mean, couldn't have said it better, man. Like, for <laughs> real. So, I mean, I know I got a little dark, but let's pick it up. Let's trade. Let's trade crazy <laughs> stories. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, yeah. let's just watch you dance and sing for a little bit, but forget that for now. <laughs> let's let's trade crazy stories. You know, you have a crazy okay. a crazy audition story. Uh, any anything mm. anything you want, you go. You can go first. Mm. Crazy. All right, let's do. Then let's the craziest story that. I'll do Wizard one for Fall streaming around. after you. So go ahead. Yeah, yeah. The crazy story. So, gosh, it's. I mean, so many things in my. I, I've talked about some of them. I'm trying to let me, let me pull one out that I haven't spoke about. All right, this is this is a funny like just audition story that sums up the type of person I would be. And I don't really recommend this to other people, um, <laughs> unless you want to suffer the same consequences <laughs> that I did. I would. As you know, starting out, you feel so indebted to your agents and managers and stuff. You don't want to like let them down, give them any excuse to be like, all right, he's not booking, he's not doing anything, he's saying no, blah, blah, blah. I wound up going to this audition. It was a commercial audition for, I don't know, maybe like Bank of America. It was something ridiculous. It had okay. nothing to do with the fact that they were looking for somebody who could play soccer. And I could play soccer growing up, and I was like, yeah, I'll just freaking say I can do whatever I got to do when I get to the audition. I'm going to lie my way through this until I get the job. And I would do it many more times than that. And in this particular instance, I show up, it's a commercial audition, so I'm like, all right, I get the copy of the sides. It's like three simple lines. It's like, hey, dude, over here, nice shot. It was like so stupid and simple, but I knew <laughs> it would pay ridiculous amounts of money if I got it. Right. So it's like, I got to do this. I just got to go in there, say the lines. That's it. So I go in, um, the casting director with the camera or whatever. They're like, all right, say your lines. I do it. I do a great job. I'm like, all right, awesome. I'm like, all right, wonderful. All right, where, where do I sign? Where do I, where do I, where do I, where do I go? And uh, they're like, can you tell us a little bit about your experience uh, with soccer? I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, I played a lot uh, when I was growing up. And then in college, I, I played a lot. I played the, you know, I, I would have played uh go you know thought about going professional but i was doing you know acting obviously i'm doing this here and uh but you know i play like intramural and stuff and i still play all the time with my friends granted i have probably hadn't played since i was in like fifth grade um but i'm just bullshitting them and they're like what position did you play i'm like you know i played all of them probably like you know right wing was the one <laughs> i played the most uh yeah well here, here we go so they go uh they reach out from under the table they go okay great here's a soccer ball can you show us some tricks oh, God. and i'm like oh my god oh shit <laughs> and i'm like well you know i actually i played goalie mostly that's like what i mostly played was goalie so like i can do some tricks but like really i'm good at catching and making sure people don't score i'm like well this is you know you're gonna have to show us uh some tricks in order to do what we're doing here so they toss me the ball and i'm like all right sink or swim and i literally it looked like i was doing the irish jig around a soccer ball <laughs> Because I had no idea what I was doing. I'm not good at soccer. I'm actually terrible at it. And uh, I just made a giant fool of myself. And they were like, uh, they gave me that look of like, you are you were just full of shit, right? And I was just like, uh, yep, that's it. And I walked Did out. Did they kick you out? They really, you left? No, they let me sit there and make a fool of myself. Oh. And uh, let me embarrass myself. I'm sure they laughed about it. And they're like, okay, thank you. And That's that was it. So and I have so crazy. many of those stories where I've just made a fool of myself. Gosh, it's like, I, I want just just a, a tangent to this. I was auditioning for like um, Fox, uh, like you know the network for mm -hmm. like a big series or something. And I was like, I got to make bold choices. I got to do something to stand out amongst everyone. And there was a moment in the scene I remember 
where the character like throws a rock through the glass and like breaks the glass and everyone's like <gasps> around him. He's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. the timid character. So I'm like, all right, obviously I can't do that in this scene. But what I'll do is I'll take the sides, like your they call your your audition the, your, that you print out your sides, and I I'm gonna actually see if I can do it here. What I did. Okay. He's like, all right, dude, guys, let's party. And I did this, yeah. and then the papers went like this, <laughs> slow motion <laughs> down, and the casting director is looking at me like this. <laughs> Like for for literally, it felt like five minutes, and it was probably ten seconds. But the papers just going this. And they're like, "What the fuck did he just do?" And they're like, "Uh, thank you." And I thought they'd never call me back again. But here's the here's the kicker to this. I did make a choice. It was interesting. Nobody got hurt. Yeah. I don't recommend doing things that we yeah, know would yeah, break yeah. things or getting hurt. I thought it was like just enough bold enough to stand out and be funny. They didn't think it was funny, so I missed there. But they wound up calling me back in for auditions. So you know, you're. I, I think it's always worth taking the risks. Um. Anyway, what about you? What's your What's your terror terror moments? <laughs> this one, I don't think I've ever told you this, but okay. Um. So when I was in my prime, I don't know. I was hitting. Big boy numbers on Instagram, growing like I was thinking I was at like two hundred thousand followers. Yeah, I was popping off, right? So I just you know I was streaming a lot, and I never forget this. I so I was streaming for a few hours, Fortnite obviously, and just chilling. You know, streams going well, everything's good, and out of nowhere, I get like a like a two hundred and fifty dollar donation from it says ninja uh. and it, and the, and the and the message says yo man love your love your tips and tricks videos like i think it's awesome um like let's play together or something <laughs> in my head i was like this is the moment where my life decisions Jeez. paid off cuz at that at that time ninja was playing with drake he yeah. had like 200,000 live viewers. I was like, that's it. My content is good. I got noticed, like all the hard work. I'm going to collab with him. Like I'm going to be able to stream. I, I see like, I'm not one of those people. Like I'm going to be, I'm going to be famous. Like, yeah, I'm famous. Like yeah. screw everybody. My first thought was I could financially play video, like to say, sustain myself to play video games yeah. for the rest of my life. Like this is, this is it. <laughs> So I keep straight. I'm like playing it cool. I'm just like, oh, sick. Like, yeah, man. Like, whatever. Um, my Discord, like, I can even see like Discord messages popping off. Like, my moderator is like, yo, this is crazy. Like, yeah, like, this is awesome. So the stream ends, and I'm sure everyone can guess by now it was a fake ninja. Yeah. It wasn't him. Yeah. And it was some guy who was like, oh, yeah, man, I'm making a YouTube video. Um, that's called donating as random streamers to get people's reactions. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> so I was like, what are you going to charge it back? He's like, nah, you can keep, you can keep the money. I was just like, oh you know gosh. what? <laughs> I was just like, so wait, is that video published somewhere? I dude, he gave me his channel. I looked for like the next three, four months. He never posted a video. Oh gosh. And <sighs> like I wasn't dev because like I'm not I'm not um, relying on anyone else to get me like yeah. success. But it was just such a cool thought. Like, hey, if this actually this happens, it. I could probably like if you have like a thousand viewers, you can live off of that comfortably, like forever. You know. And I was almost there. Like I needed mm. that's like something that would have just you know pushed me. That happened to me so many times, and this is where it gets hard, where you think you have this opportunity. And yeah. um, in acting, they call it like um, you're pinned, which means that they're thinking about hiring you. They're either waiting to clear you with the producers or production company, or um, they have somebody else, or the other option is they have somebody else in mind, but they're waiting to see if they have to say yes. And if they don't say yes for scheduling conflicts or they just don't like the project, you would be the person that they would hire. I wound up auditioning. This was back when, do you remember the show Vinyl that was out on HBO? Scorsese did it. It was about like the music industry in like okay. the 70s or 80s or whatever. Um, big show at the time. And it was, um, season one had already ended, had great reviews. 
And I was auditioning to play Donny Osmond, you know, like the singer Donny Osmond. <laughs> okay. Um, and back when I auditioned for this, I, you know, I had the same haircut as he did back when he was like, you know, in his late teens or early 20s. I can't remember how old it was. And I wound up getting the phone call from my agent. They're like, it was a small audition scene, but it was going to be recurring throughout the entire season. I mean, Donny Osmond was a very pivotal person in the music industry at that yeah. time. And they call me. I think I can say this. I don't like NDA, whatever. Uh, I book, I book the role of Donny Osmond. And wow. I'm like, oh my gosh, my life is about to change. Yeah, I'm yeah. the lead. I'm not, I'm not a lead. I'm, I'm, I'm like a, a big character. I'm a name character based off a real person in the show. Scorsese and movie or show. I, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like, this is it. This is it. This is it. And I wound up finding out that the second season gets canceled. Oh, no. It's not coming back for season two. No, dude. And it was for no other... They, they didn't say why the reason was, but I think it was like a stupid discrepancy between maybe like money or rights or something. It was like... Because it was the reviews were so good. Yeah. You know? It was so well received that it seemed ridiculous that it wasn't going to go further. And I remember when that happened, I was like shattered. And that same feeling has happened to me countless times. Yeah. Countless Countless mm -hmm. times. I mean, I did a movie with Seth Rogen, and I had a comedic bit with it, and I'm acting with Seth Rogen, and they cut the scene out. I remember you know? telling you that. So oh. many of these times, these things happen. I mean, my, my first big gig that I did was uh, the show The Blacklist, and I remember it was like the first TV show thing I was doing, and I told everybody about it. Facebook, watch me on The Blacklist, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I went up sitting with a bunch of friends in New York, and my scene got cut. For no other reason other than it was exposition. Like, my character had no point to the story. He was just, like, a friend of the main villain kid because they're all serialized things. And, you know, these things beat you up as a performer. But you have to know that you're good, you're worth it, you got hired for a reason. These things will keep coming around. You got to keep fighting. I mean, I always think of, like, uh, Henry Cavill, you know, yeah. Superman, mm -hmm. The Witcher. He's yeah. uh, Love him. And he had auditions for like every superhero role. He was like dubbed the, the most unlucky person in Hollywood because he'd keep getting so close, but he never booked like that big thing. And then eventually he became Superman, you know, and then he became Gerald. And then, yeah, and Gerald. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Which I think is more, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's to, me, to me yeah. is, more, is yeah. more of a prolific thing. But, you know, it's just about sticking through it. And, and if, if, you can, if you can survive those... Uh, tough moments then you know you're doing it for the right reasons hey voice actors just wanted to take a quick second from this episode to let you know about an amazing opportunity we have for points of experience listeners we've teamed up with voice123.com to get you all 15% off their premium membership starting with the 395 tier now they also offer a free membership where you can check it out and see what they're about but with the paid memberships you're going to get access to more auditions you're going to get your auditions faster you're going to get better support you can upload more samples all of that is going to be available with the paid memberships. I've used it before in my career, and I've curated my own client list that I've still worked with today. I started making money. It's also a great opportunity for you to take a portfolio of this paid work and present it to agents or managers and say, hey, look, I'm professional, I'm bookable, I've made money doing this, and here are the jobs that I did it on in TV, radio, commercial, video games, animation. They have it all at Voice123. So go to voice123.com slash plans slash POX, and you're going to get 15% off their paid memberships if you are a first-time premium package buyer or looking to upgrade into a higher tier that you've never purchased before i promise you it's a great place to start working so check it out and start booking today yeah man i mean if uh sitting with your friends waiting for your scene to come up and then it never comes up isn't a tough moment then i don't know uh yeah. what is because <laughs> here's, here's another funny is, thing here's, that is brutal man much smaller scale I was doing a student film, a Columbia student film with a bunch of great people. Um, this guy, Jim Garvey, made this movie called Kim Jong Kill. And I think this was about killing Kim Jong Un before, like, that James Fra Franco Seth Rogen thing was ever a thing. I think this was about, like, killing Kim Jong Un uh, at some point early 2010s or something like that, 2015, 14. And uh, I had a small, funny moment where I play this nerd in, like, a group therapy session. And I'm like, uh, what did I say? Like, my name is Robert. And, uh, Oh, oh, I go, my name, I can't believe I remember this. I was like, my name is Robert and I have a, uh, uh, problem. I, uh, 
Okay. I'm like I'm talking about my glandular problem. I can't remember what it was, but I'm it's like a, just a funny, stupid little moment. Right. And I'm like, oh, cool! It's my first short film. It's gonna it's, it's like made by real filmmakers and stuff. And I wind up going to the premiere for it at Columbia, and I see the director. I'm like, yo, what's up, Jim? And he's he goes, oh, yeah. oh <laughs> shit! You know what happens next? We didn't tell you. <laughs> We had to cut your scene out because the movie was too long. No. He's like, but it was hysterical and everybody loved it. You were great. There's nothing against yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and then he's like, you can still come watch the movie if you want. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm here already. <laughs> and so I had to sit through and watch this movie that I was cut out of. Uh, Brutal, yeah. Man. A lot of shame. But, you know. This, I mean, this is good for even everyone listening. Like, it's not, it's not all glamour. It's not all, it's not easy. No. It's, <laughs> no. You're gonna suffer, but it's worth it. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, if you love it, if if you yeah, if you, you can passion. get through all of this stuff, it's a really good indicator for you. Whatever you're pursuing, whatever you know, if you're streaming, and if you can stream to three people and feel happy doing it and content, yeah. and you're just having fun doing it to to one or three people, then great. You're doing something that you love, and if you find success through doing that, then wonderful. But I think most people do it for the the fame and they're doing it for the wrong reasons. And that's why some people get discouraged or burnt out really easily. You know, they give up really quickly. If they make a TikTok video and it doesn't blow up, then they're like, I'm not doing this anymore. It's like, yeah. well, yeah, because you tried making TikToks to blow up as it's just instead of doing what you love and letting an organic audience that thinks the same as you be like, oh, I also think that way. You know, that's why people always say like vulnerable storytelling often is very relatable and become successful. See, it's not it's all it's that. And it's also everyone sees the end product of everything. You mm. look at a basketball player. You don't see how many shots he's taking in the gym before the game. You see him dunking yeah. on people like <laughs> you don't True. see like the TikTok video. You don't see the idea process. The, or the hundred drafts before they the publish drafts, the one that you like, see. You no know, one sees that stuff. Yeah. That's why it's discouraging when, to people when they start streaming and they have one viewer and they're like, well, screw this. Like, I give up. Like, this is too hard. Yeah. Everything is hard. You just have to keep going and pick the thing you love. And just yeah. do it. I do think another tidbit too, which is helpful is, and I say this to Allie all the time because she's a writer, is try and work smarter and not harder. I mean, it's a, a cliche saying, but I think a lot of people think like, I'm just going to like, bull, and it was what I was doing at first as an actor, just kind of like bull rush your way through to success. And some people that works, but you might have like one idea, uh, like for a writer's pres uh, example, like you might have one really good script idea and it's amazing and you might have sent it out to like three people and you didn't get the response that you wanted right yeah so you're like i have that this i'm giving up i'm gonna i'm gonna try and write something else and you just keep doing that time after time after time after time again when really maybe the thing you had to do was just strategize who to reach out to a little bit better yeah you know spend your time researching who would be the right person the perfect person to send your thing to or what would be the perfect video for you to make um Instead of just like making a billion videos um, mindlessly thinking you can throw a bunch of crap at the wall and it's going to stick that you're not even happy about making. If you worked really hard on one thing you cared about, working smarter, not harder. People think they're just going to muscle through. And to some degree, people say that about TikTok. And I, I just keep coming back to TikTok because it's a really great opportunity for people to cut through yeah. the noise and for random people to become successful. Um, but sometimes just constantly making stuff that you don't care about is going to be what burns you out and is going to be your demise. Because how can you sustain that oh, yeah. if you don't find that joy? 100%. So work smarter. And harder. even to add on to that, make sure you're working the hardest on the right things. Like, mm -hmm. let's say, you know, you're a streamer. I, I keep, you know, I'm just only going to talk about stuff that I know because yeah. I want to give out, you know, <laughs> advice from my own perspective but let's say you're a streamer and you spend two weeks every day on on graphics but you don't stream mm. you're focusing on the wrong thing like yeah you want your like bit explosion to look cool and i'm sure it does but you should be focusing on your content 
Mm. You're like, oh, I'm putting so much hard work in, but you're not working on the right things and the things that actually yeah. are that actually matter more. Or reaching out to people to collaborate with. And I remember you used to tell me that all the time. Like that was a big thing that you would do is you were like, you know, either um, getting somebody else to do do a shout out for you or just having that person work with you doing a collaboration video. Like that's working smarter and not harder. You know, you can keep mindlessly doing things when if you just asked one person to collaborate, you'd invite their whole audience to then be your audience. I think that's applicable for any type of artistic venture. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there, everyone's guilty of it. I mean, I found myself on Photoshop, spending an hour tweaking the way a letter looked, and I'm like, is this yeah. really efficient for me? <laughs> like, no, because you get so yeah. involved in your craft and you want it to be perfect in every way, but it's also your business. Yeah, like you, you have to be smart about it. And I used to do when I lived in New York. I used to edit websites for actors and. That's how I made my living kind of like freelance. I was doing website design through Wix. So I'd basically use a website builder to build other people's websites. It was a very innovative way of doing things. And a lot of the people I would work with were older actors. And as I'd be working with those older actors, you know, six months or a year would go by and they would just constantly have revisions for this website. They constantly want to keep updating it. And it's like, because that was the only thing that they felt like they could control in their career. So they'd be like, I want to change this one line. And I get so frustrated because I'm in my head. I'm like, this is not what you should be worrying about. Yes, having exactly. your website and all that stuff is great. But you need to work on your craft. You need to go and make a short film. You need to go and audition. You know, worry about those things. Worry about your content. Like you were saying, worry about your yeah. craft. Yeah. People focus on these things that, and it's, unfortunately, it's the, it's the plight of, of the artist where we feel like we don't have control of our our careers. But the minutia little things on the uh, your websites and your reels like nobody cares about that you have to have good stuff and it's got to be sure it's got to be presentable and and but at the end of the day the thing that's going to separate you from everybody else and i i guarantee will lead to your success is your good content or your good talent and i think that procrastination stems from fear mm. a lot of times you know you're you're sitting there making revisions to your website instead of streaming or making movies or doing it you're you're so scared of what's going to happen when you just do it or what the results are going to be that you procrastinate and do all this other little like stuff on the side that you know you shouldn't be focusing on as much i agree i agree it's it's scary to to do this stuff but Focus on your mental health and, and making sure you're happy. That's a good way of spending your time other than, um, you know, like go to the gym. Figure out a way of yeah. of, of, of exercising that, that anxiety out of you um, to, you know, you can be productive in your mental and physical health. I go on walks or I go on runs and that's a way better pr- productive activity for me to make sure that my mind is clear, meditating, so that way when I get the opportunity – to do what I'm doing, you know, I decide to stream or I decide to make a video or I decide to audition at that point in the day. Like I'm in the right state of mind to do it. See from someone who doesn't do that stuff, how, (laughs) how does that No, It's, it's something that everyone should do, but I'll play devil's advocate. How does that clear? Like, how does that help a creator or someone in general? You know, let's say you do you meditate. Someone who doesn't meditate at all, mm-hmm. or go for runs or walks, and someone who does, obviously you're healthier physically. But mm-hmm. what else does it provide for a creative? Do you think? In your opinion? so, let's do the let's do a back and forth here then, because yeah. we can use use an example, and I can kind of speak on my own behalf. When I meditate, and when I do it right, when I'm able to get into a good state of meditation, where I'm truly clearing my thoughts, I'm truly just listening to my own breath and I'm allowing myself to be present and be connected. I feel like that anxiety that I have every day about the things I need to do, the things I, that are worrying me, like whether it's like money, family, like the idea of death, like all these grim things (laughs) that are, I think about all the time when I deal with my own anxiety and I am a very anxious person and I deal with depression more so after my father died, I've had a intense wave of depression yeah. come over me in real face with my own morality uh mortality not morality uh you know i i'd have to 
figure out ways of just kind of centering myself and figuring out the things that I care about. So if I'm so like, oh, I got to do this, I got to do this, oh, the cat's doing that, you know, like my house and I got to cut the lawn, I got to pay this guy. I gotta do, yeah. If I have all these billions of thoughts going on, how can I authentically portray like a calm character when I have so much going on in my life? That's now, granted, point. there's moments maybe where I've, I'm playing a troubled, dark character. I'm going to use that shit. Yeah. That uh-huh. shit's coming 100%. right into the pot. I don't think it's healthy always to do that. (laughs) But, you know, there's times where it works. You know, sometimes, like, I'll be doing an audition and Allie will be filming it for me and I'll get frustrated because there's, like, my cats are making noises or somebody's blaring music outside or blah, 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 blah. And it helps me. But more often than not, I'm getting so aggravated because I'm not centered and I'm, I'm like more worrying about like, I need this money. I need this job. I need these things to go right. Why am I not successful? Why is this person, you know, like I'm worrying about all this stuff. The constant repetition of meditation and centering and grounding myself reminds me that I'm here right now. I have to be happy with my day to day. I am living right now. I could die tomorrow, you know? And if I'm not happy and I'm not content with myself today, then what is the point of all this? Yeah. We're living right now. We are living in this moment right now. We always talk about, people I think always say, when I get this, then I'm going to live. Yeah. When I make this amount of money, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be so happy. I'm going to have no stress. Mm-hmm. When I when I finally write this or I get cast on this thing, then I'm going to be happy. Then mm-hmm. we just, reality, we just find new things to complain about exactly. or new stresses and anxiety because exactly. we didn't address the root problem. So, so for you, what is it do you feel like that, you how are you not feeling those things throughout your day is that not a way that you how how are you managing those i have to imagine you're feeling somewhat of those feelings how are you managing that day to day when having those feelings <laughs> that's the that's why i'm asking you <laughs> um i'm just as anxious. so what do you think it is about meditation then that is not is 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 it just daunting or you feel like it's not going to work it's so it's hard for me to take it seriously i don't want, i don't know if that's the right phrase i want to use but Mm -hmm. like if i'm if i imagine myself sitting there like trying to feel my own breath like i'll i'll like laugh (laughs) i don't don't know man like Mm -hmm. it's hard to it's hard for me to like think of it as but i but okay here's the thing but that's a very real reaction too i'm not like there's i know that it's real and i know that it's helpful and i know that i need to do it that's Mm -hmm. what i'll say but Mm -hmm. but i feel like it's how do you I know there's no straightforward answer, but it's it's. How would you suggest taking it like seriously? I I don't know. You know, I mean, dude, it's honestly I'm the same way, and Allie is a way more spiritual person than I am, okay. and she is yeah. the one who encourages me a lot to do these things. And granted, I used to be so against meditation. Yeah, I'm like, listen. Well, you're over there trying to figure out how to clear your freaking mind. I'm trying to figure out how to pay my fucking rent. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. like, I'm like, like, like... But PJ, this is how you do it. Like, The yeah. boat is sinking. The, there is water <laughs> a, aboard this ship. There is yeah. a hole that is getting bigger by the second. If I take a moment to, 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 to relax, I'm underwater. That's how yeah. I had felt for a very long time. But I realized... That when I would give myself that opportunity to like relax and clear my mind and clear those thoughts and like, and trust me, it took me so long to be able to even do it for more than like five minutes. Right, right. Um, yeah. But the more that I was able to do that, even with like cold showers, because I do like cold showers really help me a lot too. I'm so much more productive at the things that I'm trying to do to get me out of the sinking ship yes. when I do it that way. Like as a writer, um, when I'm writing with Allie or writing for myself, I'm more like those other BS thoughts aren't clouding my my mind and my yeah. judgment. I'm able to perform better. So I think you need to think about how much more efficient you'll be and understand like I know this seems silly or seems stupid, but if I just give it a shot and I get through it, see what the result is like. And I think that could be applicable to anything. You know, your diet, your physical activity, your mental uh, activity with meditation – but meditation is a very interesting one. And I think if you can create that routine, you know, whether it's first thing in the morning or just getting outside and even just breathing, like we don't yeah. breathe enough. Yeah, we don't breathe at all. Like we don't go. Yeah. 
And it's scientifically proven that the majority of the stress and anxiety we experience is like held within CO two. Yeah, it's like, mm-hmm. and and it's held in places of the body that just aren't expanding and being released enough. Like the movement of, I, I, listen, I'm not a freaking scientist here, and I'm not. No, I don't, dude, I don't box know this. breathing gets me out of panic attacks. Yeah. A lot. So, so there is science there. I'm not going to be, you know, don't quote me on this, but like even the moving of the rib cage or the lower back in certain ways releases things that allow you to be less anxious or stressed. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think like there's. And, and, and I also would recommend maybe doing it with a teacher because or like even like a, a YouTube video guided meditation because some if you see somebody who's like a master at these things doing it and finding success, maybe it's an easier way, an easier entry point into uh, to trying it. No, that's a great answer. I mean, especially, you know, I didn't even think of just doing it for like a minute to start mm-hmm. off and then get, you know, getting to two minutes, then 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, I just figured like oh, I had to sit there for 10 minutes and like figure it out like. No, you know, you obviously oh gosh, start, no. start small. Dude, start in a minute. And, and yeah. I think that's the most people just don't even give their self a chance to start and incrementally True. build into things. Just start with a minute. I, I spend the first minute to five minutes of my meditation just breathing into like most you'll, you'll see there's guided meditations of people yeah. explore. Mm-hmm. I try to breathe in and focus on the top of my head and releasing my, my, like my tension there, forehead. My eyebrows, my eyes, my ears, the back of my head, my nose, my mouth, my ch- my chin, my neck, my shoulders. And I just go all the way through the body, just yeah. breathing in and focusing in that area and releasing. And then just from doing that, you feel like a thousand pounds is released from your body. Yeah, and then it's so much easier for me to fall into meditation in a meditative state um, after doing that. And, you know, this isn't we're not a meditation podcast here no, by any means. But listen, anything that's going to help people be productive, yep. I'm I'm all for that was great. I mean, I wanted to give the perspective of someone who doesn't meditate because there's people listening that don't. And yeah, I, I so what do you, so how do you get through without meditating? What is your, I know you said you don't, but like, what is it? How is your, um, I guess, however you feel is the healthiest way. How are you getting through things without doing that? So I, so, okay. So I do, <laughs> Basically, I survive by staying in my comfort zone, which is unhealthy. (laughs) Um, But that's why I'm interested in, you know, preparing myself to not be in my comfort zone, which Mm. would, you know, benefit me a lot more, I think. To an extent, it's it's like I'm okay, you know, but I know I could be a lot better. That's the problem. And I just kind of like skate by every day knowing like, hmm, I, I could have meditated. I could have eaten a little better. I could have bre- like just took a second to breathe, mm-hmm. but I didn't. And like, why didn't I? Well, I feel like if there's no alarm bells ringing, you know, you just stay in your comfort zone. And that's something I'm trying to kind of break out of. Yeah. Well, I think consistency and creating routine is the easiest way of doing it from like, there's like a Marine that would talk about this, like the making your bed principle. Like you got to make your yes. bed every day perfectly because if you, if you can't start your day committed to that one thing you've promised yourself, you're going to do every single day, then you've just opened the door to let the rest of the stuff that you had planned to do potentially fall to the wayside as well. So creating yeah. those commitments with yourself. Something so trivial will set you up for success because then you can yeah. say, oh, I I achieved the pr- my promise I made to myself. Today's going to be a, you know a good day. Mm. Cuz I, you know, just started it off good. Basically. But Yeah. It, it's yeah. It, it if you're doing anything like what we're we're doing, I mean even if you're not, even if you are, you know, working at like a you know as an accountant or whatever, all of these things will help. But I feel like it helps creatives more to an mm-hmm. extent like i can you know do that do a, a job that doesn't require the creative side of my brain without doing all the stuff we mentioned yeah well because as a creative it's like imagine you're a race car driver and you weren't getting your car tuned up and your oil changed like yeah, your body exactly is the instrument of creativity, whether it's your mind, your hand, if you're an artist or you're, you're, you're a dancer, it's your legs and your feet. If you're not taking good care of your body and all this stuff, like it's impossible to, 
be the best version of yourself as a creative. Um, it's not like you're using something else to be the creative vehicle or like, you know, like you said, if it's not like you're using Excel and that requires you to be, you know, creative. relaxed, like yeah. the, the, the inputs are going to still be the same functions, right. whether you're stressed or not stressed. Right, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> so it's really important for people who are listening to understand, understand that mm-hmm. and start, maybe start, maybe you'll, uh, encourage people to start doing that meditation and just being a better version of themselves. I hope. Come on, guys. Get to it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> do whatever makes you happy. You know, do it. Do what feels right. Everybody's got their own their own path. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think this was great. I think this was a great yeah. uh, conversation. And, you know, I, I never... F- formally interviewed interview quote unquote interviewed you we've always no. had such a casual and like i don't know it's never been you know formal like this and i, I like no it. no i'm old look I'm, the majority of our relationship has been playing like video games at this yeah. point i mean especially now living across the country across it's the like country, we yeah. Uh, mostly interact through Discord. And I think a lot of people, and that's the majority of way people have been doing, especially through a pandemic. But, you know, we, it's so, I've always found like our, each of our stories to be very similar. And it's funny how even like uh, pursuing these kind of careers and we didn't have people like helping us out. It was kind of like ground up type of figuring it out yourself. No mentor or any of that stuff. It's like, Nothing. Just pure desire and dedication to learn about these um, things. And I think there are plenty of resources, this podcast included. I mean, depending upon what you're trying to pursue, we've got different people coming on and talking about these things that you might be interested in. But absorbing as much content. I mean, yes. that was a big part of the of life for me, too, was I was reading so many books i was listening to so many podcasts i was watching so many documentaries i was watching movies i was consuming video games i was watching the car you know the cartoons and the anime so like my life while i still had other things that i was doing to make me happy but i was a perpetual student of everything that i loved so i really had my hand on the pulse of what needed to be done and and for you as well. I mean, you were watching streamers, you were, you know, researching the content, you were doing everything you had to do to figure out a way to pave your own way. If if it's one thing I can give people that are listening, you don't need anyone or anything to start doing what you love to do and, and becoming successful at it. I was just a regular kid from New York who had a regular job and I taught myself everything. If the passion is there, you will find a way to do it. That's you key. don't need anything. Please. I know it sounds so cliche, but it's real. Like yeah. you actually can do it, whatever you're passionate about. And e- even saying that, oh man, what did I, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. Okay. Very important. <laughs> don't doubt any, like anytime you, don't delay it, basically. If you want to do something and, you, and it's been in the back of your mind scratching at it for years, do not delay it. Just try it. You don't have to be a super successful version of whatever you're thinking of. Just try it and do it. Just start. Start it. You won't regret it. Yeah, it's kind of like what uh, one of the greatest actors of, of our generation said. It, um, Shia LaBeouf. Just, Just do, do it! it! Just do <laughs> it! <laughs> but for reals man idea. just do it um you know what before we before we split here because we're, we're about yeah. out of time uh keith did you have any did you, we've got keith here we didn't really have any things brought up you have you have any questions here that you, you from either of us that you'd like us to to oh, answer for that or? um i just mm-hmm. want to say if people are interested in hearing more about the streaming and content creation side just comment and I'll I'll mention some more stuff in future podcasts. Just want to make sure there's people who can benefit from that before I start talking about it more. But yeah, just leave some comments if you're interested in that. Yeah, and one of our next guests is going to be a uh, they are a Twitch streamer, and so we're we're moving more into the direction of having uh, gamers, content creators, uh, yeah. professional uh, esports players. We're going to be having more of those people on. So. 
I, I that that's a big passion of mine. You know, someone who still streams and and Joe has such a, a wealth of knowledge regarding that stuff. We want to help people because there's so many people trying yeah. to pursue that career and it's tough. So that's very important for, to us. So let us know. Let us know. That was actually going to lead into the question I had for both of you, since mm. Joe is on more of the competitive multiplayer side of things and paul you're more on the single player story driven the acting uh that sort of thing from both of your perspectives what are some keys to success for people who are trying in both directions uh i can go i can take yeah take that first uh keys to success for i mean I'll, i'll speak to gaming and content creation is consistency especially in streaming I don't care, you know, it's not easy to do, but you cannot look at your numbers. You have to be consistent. Um, So for for me, I think if you have the passion, you need to have the consistency and the mental fortitude to not compare your success to how you're doing. Because every time you stream, every time you make a video, every time you just do what you're committed to, doesn't matter what the number is, you're getting closer and closer to to being successful. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of people, what they do is they hide their viewer count and yeah. they just stream like as if they've got, you know, the same amount of people, whether it's two or 200. It's the same. Um, it's the best way, yeah. Yeah, and, and that would be kind of my answer too, which is just be your authentic self and don't try and be something that, you're not that you see somebody else doing and you're like oh if i'm just like this then i will become successful you know the reason why (laughs) you know uh (laughs) pewdiepie or nick merckx or any of these people are becoming (laughs) successful is not going to be the reason why you're i'm going to be dr respect (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) listen if you're if you are committed to creating a character then great and if that's something that's making you happy and you're finding like the pleasure in the creation of that character fine but the you have to be your authentic self don't just do that because you think like i can't be successful unless i'm a character like dr disrespect Mm -hmm. or you know whatever it might be you got to be what's right for you so that you are happy every single day you turn your camera on and you start streaming. For me, like it's two it's twofold. It's for me just being my authentic self and I have to do the things that I enjoy, play the games I want to play. I don't like there's nothing about the way I stream right now that is predicated on what anybody else might want me to. If there's a connection where like people want me to play this and I also really want to play it, yeah. great. Wonderful. But for me, I just want to have fun and play the games that I want to play and be the person I want to play. And that's what people resonate with is with me and my commentary on the games. Not this like made up idea that I think that they want to have. But there is another part of this to me, which is where the balancing act comes in. When I'm streaming, I understand that I need to be the best version of myself when I'm streaming because... Like anything, it's a show. People are giving you their time and watching. And I want to know that I'm not making other people feel like, why am I here? Why is this person so depressed? Why are they so, you know, bringing their negativity around here? It's like, no, I want to be in the most healthy, optimal version of myself for this audience. They're dependent upon me just like they are when they show up to watch a TV show. The same way they are when they turn on, you know, uh, gosh, the news is much of a freaking crapshoot most news stations could be but you know you're expecting a certain quality and so whatever you have to do kind of like we were talking about with the routines like you were saying the consistency to have the the to show up the same way every single time if not better that's uh figuring out that consistency uh will be key to your success because people will know what they're they're turning on and they'll be like yep that's that's what I like about this show, and every time I turn it on, that's that's who they are. So you got to figure out what you can do to to keep yourself in that same state of mind um, every time. Also, adding to that, set a good example for the community you're a part of. I I swear this is a real real example. I like just because you see someone kind of being an ass and they have viewers, it doesn't mean that doing that is going to make you successful or that's okay. I went to like a heart, one of these random Hearthstone streamers and I was like, "Hey, like uh ha- like I see you're playing like a new deck, like how do you play it?" And he and he goes, 
well, this isn't like a, a, a lesson stream and he banned me. And I'm just like, oh, okay. So that's, uh, that's, and he had like 500 viewers. And I'm like, I don't want people to think like you could do stuff like that and be successful. Just whatever community or just represent, be a good example for other people in the community. Mm-hmm. You know, there's always going to be people like that, but this is your craft. You are building, you're contributing to it just as much as everyone else is. And in 10, 20 years, if there's less of those type of people and more of the good versions of people, then the industry as a whole will be better off. Heck yeah. I mean, the gosh, people who are like, <laughs> they get it, they, they make their gimmick to be like an asshole streamer. Yeah, like, yeah. That person has to live looking in the mirror with themselves and every day knowing that they're... people think it works too because they have viewers. I know. But it's just a lot, people like drama, I know, but it's yeah. just not the way to go. Don't no, no, fall no. into that trap. Unless you're yeah. an asshole, then you know what? Then <laughs> and just then you're just being your authentic it. self. I mean, <laughs> just do it. You know? Yeah. 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 Be your authentic self. Exactly. And then uh, you know that's the nat- the natural selection has to do their process <laughs> and just you know eventually they'll get theirs. Um, but yeah, great great questions, Keith. Um, cool. I think we uh, we made people suffer enough. What do you What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. One now more I'd po- like to ask if I may. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah, uh, this is sort of a, a big thing in social media in general. Parasocial relationships are a very big factor for anyone who's in any entertainment industry. People thinking they know you because they watch you do anything. Yeah. How do you handle being the person that is being implied upon? I think it would be a way to phrase it. How do you handle the parasocial relationship in a good way? And can you give an example of what you have done to establish that barrier? Oh yeah. Yeah. Great, 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 great question. I'm, I'm experiencing that now kind of for the first time, uh, in a, in a more direct way. And it is interesting, especially like, so there's the, the frame that I, that I'm existing in is where, and it's kind of like how, a lot of voice actors are because we're all kind of using social media to hopefully get hired by the other people who are also voice actors who are also casting who are also directing yeah. so you're really engaged and that's a struggle that I'm dealing with on its own and I don't feel like that's as much as my authentic self as I'm not that way I love sharing and I love being a part of the community and I love being a goofball and I love all those things but using social media as a form of like getting employed is a hard pill for me to swallow but because of that dynamic that exists i think a lot of people see like people like me and people like me they're like they're hanging out at the same the same store as me like it's like we're in the same arena you know we're, we're at the same event everyone feels like that and you have people who will like say things to you in a, in a very buddy buddy personal way it was like a there's always been an old saying that like when people used to do movies there seemed like there was a relationship that existed where that person seemed like other than like a movie star but then when you did tv you're inviting the audience into their to your home and so they feel like they know you and i think that exists the same way for streamers the same ways for people who are on twitter that are uh, uh uh whatever profession they might be in but they're you know constantly talking on twitter and i've had people reach out to me and message me and constantly like like, to like get to a degree where i've answered them and i've had to be like all right here's the answer you know um great i really appreciate your support but then like the the conversation just is relentlessly going and this person may or may not take a hint and i've had to be like um you can either ignore them which has its own um, set of consequences potentially in that version they wind up saying hey that person's an asshole they're, they didn't answer me blah 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 or you can figure out a very professional way to say hey I really have enjoyed engaging with you um, typically I like to keep um, my you know my conversations restricted for people who I, I know and I really appreciate your support and I hope to see you um, on some of the channels that I do uh, you know audience participation with it just gets hard when they've entered into that realm of like okay you're you've opened your DMs for direct messaging but you got to understand that most of these people, especially for people like me, they're young people and they don't really understand the social dynamic yet. So it's a great learning experience. Not that you have to be their parent, but you also don't want to be the person who demoralizes this person for no reason. Yeah. That's not your responsibility. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't need to be these people, you know, whacking the hammer over these people's heads. If someone crosses a line, sure, 
you can politely set them straight or you can, you know, be very forward and blunt about it. I have representation, so I've used my manager to get me out of some situations sometimes and address these people. Um, but I've had to just kind of blatantly say, hey, I appreciate your help, but I, you know, I don't engage in uh, these conversations like this. If you'd like to reach out to me, you can contact my manager. You can email me at this email address. I'll get back to you when I can. Um, but it's a very interesting and and, and unique relationship to have with fans. I try to do as much as I can. Like I've done pretty much every kind of podcast or commitment that people have asked me to do because I can do it now. Yeah. Maybe when I get more busy, I won't be able to do it. And I want to know that I've at least tried to engage as much with the people who have, who have supported me as much as I humanly can. But you have to make sure you have boundaries and you're confident in your boundaries and you don't feel guilty about saying, these are my this is the line I've drawn. I don't want to cross it. And if it hurts somebody's feelings, then I understand. But, you know, you need, you need to look out for your safety and for your own mental health. That was awesome. I mean, just set boundaries for yeah. God, goodness sakes. Don't feel like you have to respond to every single thing just because you feel you're a good person or you, you feel like, you know, you owe that person something. If you have boundaries and you set them for yourself you don't you know veer off that path you'll be fine in any I think you just yeah I think that's what you just like you don't have to respond to every little thing I mean I feel like yeah. that summarizes the best you don't and I have that problem I think sometimes too I try to really answer every freaking message that I can and then I have this feeling of like okay if I if I if I've answered 95 people I should just answer the next five <laughs> but it's like, like those five people are gonna feel <laughs> left out you know it's like hey man I'm a big fan can you just reply back yeah, man, what's up? Hey, can I have $150? <laughs> like, yeah, that, that's gosh. like, that's where, you know, you can't, yeah, you can't it's... go to every DM. You don't know who you're talking to and what mm -hmm. they, their motives are. Yeah. It's, it's a tough thing to, to navigate. And most people who are artists or performers are not trained in like, you know, uh, that type of communication. So right. don't feel like you have to be responsible for handling those things perfectly. Um, just do your best. Try not to be an asshole. Try not to be mean. Try not to, to, you know, make somebody feel like they did something wrong. But if right. it's they're crossing a boundary, make sure that they understand that. We haven't been saying this, but I want to address it here. And maybe we'll do it in the intro as well. Um, if you've enjoyed this show, let your friends know about it. Um, and, and you Please. can also do the same thing by leaving like a review on Apple Podcasts or spotify i think you can also rate it um but yeah leaving a review on apple podcasts would be amazing uh that lets more that makes it get more searchability and gets out to more people so um yeah do that it would help and you can hashtag it with og poxer and we'll remember you as an og podcast listen to listen ah dude i love that og pox so og p-o-x-e-r <laughs> is that what we're going with i yeah. can't <laughs> i just Made that up in 3.2 seconds. So I like it, though. I'm sure That's we can get it. something better than that. <laughs> uh, no, I like it. We're going with it. O-G-P-O-X-E-R. Okay. O-G-P-O-X-E-R. I like it. Yeah. So, so we that'll know be that tag. it was you that contributed to our future success. Yeah. Maybe we'll have some prizes and stuff for people like that. You know, you know, yeah, hey, listen. Look, we, we've, too. We, we've been doing giveaways, and we want to do more of that stuff, and the more that we are able to do that, we'll, we will give away things. It's going to be funny for um, you know people to, when we get more listeners, to be like, man, I wish I could have got in on that. It's like, well, we didn't really have the huge following that we, you know, that requires uh, for these giveaways and stuff, but, you know, we want to do more, and we have people who are interested in the show, so. Um, but I we wish need I was an OG poxer. <laughs> it was, it'll, you'll get like a special medallion you know like for uh yeah. like on twitch it says like your x month sub if you're an og poxer <laughs> you're, we're gonna get like you're gonna get like special we're gonna maybe you know dude you know what would be sick if we made like points of experience pins and you get like oh, an yeah. og poxer pin or something monthly like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah dude that'd be sick yeah I don't know how we would get those out of people. Anyway, I'm not trying to commit to anything I have no idea about. But uh, I right. thank you, everybody, and thank you for listening to me. And can, thank you, Joe, for a wonderful uh, conversation and interview. Uh, this was fun. And uh, happy awesome. 10 episodes, right? 10 deep. Like, I don't know. People normally, like, celebrate, like, 100, but I felt 10 was pretty, like, impressive. Yeah. You know? Definitely. 10 was impressive. We're on our way. Yeah. 200. 
And, yeah, uh, I'm just maybe, gonna do this ten more times. <laughs> maybe in ten more episodes, we'll uh, we'll give PJ a soccer ball and we'll tell him to uh, show us some moves. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what that you know what that. So, do you remember in Scary Movie? You know when they're doing the Nike commercial? It's like with the basketball though. Yeah. And you hear like the it's like boom, boom, yeah. boom, yes, boom, yes, boom. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Like the squeaking, that's and like the way that they were like doing the weird dances, that's what my audition was like. It was like me like doing the Irish jig, like <laughs> and the ball going nowhere, doing nothing spectacular, extremely embarrassing. Oh, that is amazing. <sighs> and we'll that. we'll talk more about these boring stories and embarrassing stories as we go because I I have so many. Uh, let's think of one I can. Let's let's think of one I can I can preview here. What was an embar? Oh, there's a story about me. So uh, it has to do with me thinking I was going to get a gift for somebody. Okay. And then getting. We'll, we'll talk about it in another podcast. We got to leave okay. a little bit of yeah, mystery. Don't, here. Yeah, don't. We're not going to give it all away here. Listen, you got to come around for the next one. I was I was getting really excited about a thing I worked on, so I was preparing to get a gift for somebody. And uh, something happened, let's say. Something happened. <laughs> something. That's it. To be continued. That is it. All right, everybody. Thank you so Peace. much. Bye. See you next time. 